Praise the Lord, thanks for watching today. You know the Christian life is sometimes like a roller coaster ride. It goes up, it goes down, it goes around, and it can all make us very sick. The Bible speaks about men like Elijah, David, Moses, and they had these same kind of experiences we do, up and down and around, but they knew where to go when they needed help. They had to humble themselves and come before the Lord and say, Lord, I need you. The Bible said this poor man cried, the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his troubles. If you need help today, you gotta humble yourself, recognize your need, gotta help you. God bless you as you watch today. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, I do verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us? by them that heard it. The Bible says we have to be not just hearers of the word, but doers. Because if we do anything else, if you come and you listen and you sit and you, and you, and you go out and you don't apply what you hear, you deceive yourself. The Bible says you deceive yourself. You're tricking yourself. The world would say we play ourselves if we go out and we don't live what we hear. If we don't live what we talk about, it's very important. The Bible says here, we must pay. Take earnest heed. That means we must pay close attention. We need to pay close attention to what you hear. Some people, I've been to church this way, some people only come to hear the singing. And that's it. And when the word comes, they either go to sleep or they leave. I know churches like that. I know people like that. When the word comes, the word doesn't interest them. They just come for the song. It says we must pay close attention to what we hear, lest we drift away from it. See, the word doesn't drift away from us. The word is steadfast. The word is sure. The word is our foundation. The word doesn't drift away from us. The things we hear don't drift away from us. We drift away from it. We drift, we float, we spring a leak. But we need to plug up those leaks. We need to plug up those leaks with prayer. We need to plug up those leaks with praise. We need to plug up those leaks with perseverance. We need to make sure that all those holes that come in our Christian life get plugged up. What punches a hole in your spirit? What punches holes in your spirit? When, you, when you've been up on the mountain, when you sense God's presence, when you sang and you danced and you jumped and God's glory moves in you, what causes your spirit to come down? What pokes a hole in your spirit? Elijah had that problem. He was on the mountain and he saw God's power. He saw God's glory and God proved himself to him. Showed him that he was almighty and all powerful. And everybody saw it. And you would think this man, Elijah, was a man who was a man after God's own heart, just like David. You would think that he would go out and proclaim victory in the Lord. The Lord is victorious, and I have victory. You would think that was the case. And for a little while, for a little while, that was the case. But Elijah sprung a leak. He sprung a leak. One little woman. One little woman named Jezebel threatened his life. Threatened his life. And fear, fear, punched a hole in his spirit. And he went and he sat under.
under a tree. And he said, Lord, it's too much. Too much. I want to die. I want to die. What plugs a hole in your spirit? In your spirit. David was the king. King David was the king. King's reputation of not being able to be told anything. He was the king after all. But he allowed his men to go off into battle without him. He got complacent. He got comfortable with himself, with his kingly duties. And he decided he would take a walk. And he took a walk up on the roof in the cool of the night. And he saw a woman washing herself. And lust took a hold of him. And he wound up taking that woman for himself. She belonged to another man. That lust plugged a hole into his spirit. What plugs a hole into your spirit? When all seems good and all seems well and all seems powerful, what plugs a hole in your spirit? Peter told Jesus, I will go with you to the ends of the earth. I will go with you anywhere, Lord. Surely you're not going to die. Surely you're not going to die. I'll go with you wherever you go. And Jesus had to rebuke Peter. He had to rebuke him. And tell him, this night, you're going to deny me three times. Of course he didn't believe it. Of course, because Peter was sure of himself. Peter was filled with self-confidence. He was filled with pride. And that very same pride plugged a hole in his spirit. Plugged a hole in his spirit. And he wound up running. And he wound up lying. Just like Jesus said. What plugs a hole in your spirit? When all seems well. When all seems good. When you least expect it. Something comes and plugs a hole in your spirit. You need to be very mindful. Very mindful that Satan is alive and well. As we started out saying, Satan is alive and well. You see, we get saved and then we ignore what we have. Don't you understand what has been entrusted to us? Salvation. Salvation has been entrusted to us. Salvation has been given to us. Salvation is something is your most prized possession. Jesus Christ, his spirit lives in you. His spirit lives in you. You need to take very careful, very careful, pay careful attention to your salvation. Do not ignore your salvation. You know, we use this verse, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? We use this verse when we're talking to those who are not saved. How are you going to escape if you neglect salvation? God is calling out. God is reaching to you. But let me tell you what? God here is not talking to the unsaved. He's talking to us. He's talking to those who know Jesus. He's telling Christian folk, how will you escape if you, if I neglect this great salvation? How am I going to escape? How am I going to make it? How am I going to, am I going to get by if I neglect what God has given me? I need to pay close attention to those things which I hear. Pay very, very close attention. You see, we spring a leak. We spring a leak. In Revelation chapter 3, the church, they lost their first love. They lost their first love. We lose our first love. We don't do things. Jesus said we need to go back and do the things that we done that we did before. I know somebody. Just know him recently. Recently. When I first knew him, he was not a Christian. Hadn't had too much exposure to him, but he wasn't a Christian. And it was obvious, pretty obvious to me that he wasn't a Christian. But this person was exposed to the gospel. Exposed to the gospel. And gave his heart and his life to Jesus Christ. And now this person who wasn't a Christian before, now, two, three months later, this person is, what I should say, hot for the Lord, on fire for the Lord. Do you remember how it was when you first got saved? I mean, how you felt like you could run through a troop how you felt that you could that you could uh, 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 stand up against the enemy no matter what? How you felt you could run through a wall when you first got saved? The joy, the peace, everything you had when you first got saved. 